overboard. The boys' guts grew tight. The week of boot camp had been tense enough, especially after Ratcliffe, hyper at the best of times, stopped taking his meds. Now, on their way back to Derby, the boat had broken down and it felt like a flashpoint. The guards were on edge and the survival instructor, Maddox, was mutinous. We have a responsibility to the kids, Maddox insisted. Crack the thing, he said, turning to the biggest guard. The guard peeled the emergency beacon from its carry pouch. Don't, the captain barked. Maddox nodded to the guard. It'll be dark in 30 minutes. We've got lights, the captain said. Did you reset the sat phone? Try the radio again. Maddox tore off his cap, scruffed his hair. We've done all that. We're out of options. The boy and the other detainees, Ratcliffe, four other guys and three girls, stared through their tiredness as though the drama in front of them was unfolding on a TV screen. You crack that EPIRB, the captain said, breathing hard, and this inconvenience becomes an emergency. The authorities are notified and it costs you ten or twelve grand to get your crew to Derby. That's what you'd be up for if you fire that beacon. The guard swore under his breath. Maddox looked uncertain. Give it to me, Ratcliffe chirped, Manic. Let me do it. Sit down, Bradley, Maddox said curtly, and for once, Ratcliffe did as he was told. The tightness in the boy's guts shifted to his chest. He wanted out. He knew he could make it to the rocky coastline, a K or more away. He'd swum twice that distance in the pool of juvie, but there were monsters in the gulf. They'd seen the long shadows of sharks in the water below them on their outward trip. They'd seen the floating tree trunks, with eyes, all along the coast. Estuarine crocodiles. They'd found the translucent body of a box jellyfish on the beach, dead but still deadly, according to Maddox. Maddox would be the only one likely to dive after him. He was fit and a reasonable swimmer, and unlike the guards, he actually seemed to give a shit. He had hauled Ratcliffe out of the waterhole by his shirt the previous day, after he'd dog-paddled out of his depth. In the end, the decision was made for him. Ratcliffe discovered a thin black tube under his seat. With practice stealth, he sliced the tube with the shiv he'd sharpened on rocks at the waterhole the day before. The stench of petrol jolted the boy to his feet. He scissor kicked over the side rail and hit the water shoulder first. He was deaf for a second before his life jacket buoyed him to the surface. His skin prickled with relief and he started swimming for the coast. Someone roared at him, but he paddled on. Others joined the chorus and he heard a body slice into the water. The bass drum whomph of ignition turned the chorus to screams. The boy stole a glance over his shoulder. Flames were leaping to the roof of the cabin and Maddox had stopped swimming to watch bodies plunging from the gunnels. The boy swam on. When the fuel tank blew, he felt the thunder in his whole body. For a moment, the water around him glowed orange like a second sunset, but by the time he turned his head again, the flames had become thick black smoke that surged skyward in a rolling mushroom cloud. Parts of the boat rained down around him. The evening air sparked with screams of pain. Over here, Maddox yelled. Swim to me. Come on, you can do it. The boy turned his back on that mess. The mess of the boat and the mess of his prison life, then lowered his face into the water and swam, stroke after stroke, for the distant silhouette of coastline. After a dozen strokes, the boy felt his life jacket dragging at his throat, holding him back. Spaz! A voice shouted from behind. Ratcliffe's voice. Spaz, wait up! In a moment of calculated rashness, the boy unclipped and unzipped his jacket and set it floating on the tide. He tore the Velcro on his runners and kicked them and his wet socks off with his toes. Spaz! Ratcliffe screamed. His voice broke and he squealed. Wait for me! But the boy didn't wait. He stretched out in the water, set his feet kicking, and counted his strokes. One, two, three. Breath. One, two, three.